In this lesson, we are going to learn how to buy um, by 10, 100, and 1,000. So one thing I want you to keep in mind is um, we've already learned to multiply by 10, 100,000. And when we multiplied, we were adding numbers, excuse me, adding zeros to the end of the number, depending on what we were multiplying by. And remember, division is the exact opposite of multiplication. So this time, we're going to be subtracting zeros um, from our original number. So let's look at some examples. So here um, we can start with an easy one, a simple one, 60 divided by 10. So you probably can do that in your head because you know your 10 multipl multiplication tables. So 60 divided by 10 is 6. But let me use this one um, as an example to sh show you the pattern that we're going to be using to solve um, more complex ones. Okay, so 10 has one zero. So I'm going to mark out one zero in my 10 and then come over here and mark out one zero in my 60. So that leaves me with six divided by one, which is six. Okay, let's look at one that's um, a little more difficult. 6,000 divided by 100. So we're going to start by looking at this number right here, our 10, 100, or 1,000. In this case, it's 100, so it has two zeros. So I'm going to mark out my two zeros. That's why I've highlighted it to show that it's being um, marked out. And then I'm going to come over here and mark out two zeros over here. So what I'm left with is 60. So notice that I still have a zero that wasn't marked out because I only marked out two zeros. So this 60 divided by 1 equals 60. So marking out the zeros helps us get it down to numbers that are a little bit easier to work with. So let's look at this one. 60,000 divided by 1,000. So 1,000 has three zeros. So we're going to mark out three zeros. And since I marked out three zeros here, I'm going to mark out three zeros here. And so again, I have 60 divided by 1, which is 60. And that makes sense, right? How many thousands fit into 60,000? 60. 60. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind, remember when we multiply, our product, our answer, is bigger than what we started with. But when we're dividing, our quotient, our answer, should be smaller than what we started with. So, for example, 60 is less than 60,000. 60 is less than 6,000. 6 is less than 60. So that can help you know if your answer is reasonable or not. Okay, let's look at a couple of other um, examples. So here we have 12,000 divided by 100. So since I'm dividing by 100, 100 has two zeros. So I'm marking out two zeros here and coming over here and marking out two zeros. So that leaves me with 120 divided by 1. And that is 120. So what that means is that 12,000 divided by 100 is 120. Okay, let's come look at this one right here. 55,000 divided by 10. So 10 has one zero, so I'm marking out that one zero. And then I'm going to come over here and just mark out one zero. So I'm not marking out all the zeros, just one of them. And what I'm left with is 5,500 divided by 1 equals 5,500. So that means 55,000 divided by 10 equals 5,500. Okay, last one. Here we have 55,000 divided by 100. So in this case, since we're dividing by 100, we're going to mark out 100 here, then mark out two zeros here. That leaves me with 550 divided by 1, which is 550. Okay, in this slide, 
the problems look a little bit different. And what is different about them is that instead of dividing by 10 or 100 or 1,000, we are dividing by multiples of those numbers. So we're going to use the same pattern of marking out our zeros, but our division is going to look just a little bit different. So here, let's start with 90. 90 has one zero in it. So I'm going to start by marking out that zero and coming over here and marking out one zero in this number, in the 81,000. Okay, so when I do that, I'm left with 8,100 divided by 9. So what I like to do is I like to circle the numbers that I, I can divide in my head. So in this case, I can divide 81 by 9. I know that that is 9. But then I've got these other two zeros that have to be accounted for. So they haven't been marked out and they aren't in the circle. So I'm just going to take those two zeros and add them on to the end of my number, of my quotient. So 81,000 divided by 90 equals 900. Okay, let's look at this one. 2,000 divided by 400. So again, I'm going to start with my 400 and see how many zeros there are. There are two zeros, so I'm going to mark those out. And then I'm going to mark these two zeros out right here. Okay, so we've taken care of the zeros. Then I'm going to look and see what I can divide. So if I were to just circle the 2, I can't say 2 divided by 4. So I'm going to include this 0 in it. I'm going to put a circle around the whole 2, 0, the whole 20. Because then I can say 20 divided by 4 is 5. And then I come back and look for any extra zeros, but there aren't any. All the zeros over here are either in this circle that we use to divide or they've been marked out. So 2,000 divided by 400 equals 5. Okay, so finally, 56,000 divided by 7,000. So I'm going to start over here. And 7,000 has three zeros in it, so I'm going to mark out those three zeros and I'm going to mark out the three zeros in this number. So then I am left with 56 divided by 7, which equals 8. So that means 56,000 divided by 7,000 is 8.